Hey, good morning everybody. It's Brian with Team Aquascape. It is another busy, busy week. We've got our first pond construction project of the year. We've been doing all kinds of fix-its and tying up those loose ends like we had last year. We've got a remodel that we've got to do, show you that before and after is an exciting and as exciting as that must be for all you guys. It's nothing compared to what Chris and Ed are up to. They are heading back to Atlanta for the Shaquille O'Neal. Yes, that's right. They're building another pond for Shaquille O'Neal. We built him a project, a pretty epic project for an epic personality a couple years ago, and he has been clearly bitten by the water gardening bug. He loves the water feature so much that he's having us come out to do another one. I guess they attempted to do something themselves or somebody locally tried to do something themselves and it didn't work out quite the way Shaquille O'Neal wanted it. So he called in the professionals. We did such a good job the first time. We're gonna come out and build him an epic, epic project. And I think some places in there we've also got a spillway bowl replacement and some other little loose ends here and there but i'm going to take you through at least two projects this week and that prep work on shaquille o'neal you guys hold on tight because it's going to be another exciting team aquascape episode here we go we are going to build a pondless waterfall the best way to learn anything is to teach it we are rocking and rolling on this pond Well, Brian, I'm here with Ed. As you can tell, we're in a little bit different of a climate than you guys are right now. And I don't know why, why is that Superman logo uh, behind us? We are back at Shaq. <laughs> Shaq 2.0. This is the number two project that we're doing for them. When we were out here, even if you have natural groundwater, we don't know what the water quality is going to be like, etc. So they didn't listen. Yeah. They came in, dug a big giant hole. Not a lot of imagination, just a big giant excavation. It only stays full like a couple feet in the bottom yeah. and it turns into mush and the water's dark, dark brown. So it's just nasty stuff. It's not fitting for this incredible property. Right. Not even close. It's not what Shaq envisioned. So what we have to do is we got to drain. We have to put in an under drain system to manage all this groundwater that's coming in. We're going to come in with a rubber membrane, but a giant one. Mm -hmm. custom made for Shaq because everything he has here is oversized. Massive polypropylene liner. We're then going to reshape the entire pond, give it some curves and make it a little bit more interesting. Make it like one of our typical aquascape yeah. ecosystems, just on a grander scale. Yeah. Wetland filtration system, intake bay, massive custom liner, big giant boulders coming around. Plus we're working with the team of Cork Dreams. They're going to do a bunch of like putting greens and that type of stuff in and around the entire water feature. And this is going to be over the top. It's going to be insane. It's almost unfortunate how frequently, especially you run into this, right? Working all over the world. And it's like, you end up coming in and kind of saving the day. Kind of like Superman, <laughs> right? Kind of. But you told him you had this conversation. I exactly. remember you having this conversation exactly. when we were out here building the first pond. You're yeah. like, ah, it's just, it's not going to work. The yeah. inflow, outflow, you just don't know. And unfortunately, I think they learned their lesson. And, I think so. And, because <laughs> Shaq's been pissed for two years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's been like, what's up with the pond? You yeah. know, he's like, this is a mess. So they reached out to us and they said, can you help? And we're like, absolutely. Yeah. Love this. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Hey, we're going to do a quick run through of the pond and we're here for the week right. just doing some prep work getting it ready for a much larger event later on in a couple months yeah. so we're gonna run you through some of the logistical stuff that we're doing here but also the design elements and the infrastructure that's so 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 important to make it so this pond will not fail like it inevitably did the first time around right you so got it. all right well we'll be right back So, so close. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to race time as usual, get the liner in here as quickly as possible. The reason being is we still have groundwater issues. So this groundwater continues to pop up. We knew it was gonna be an issue, so we did set our mind to it, and it just keeps coming back. It just keeps coming back. So every morning we come in, we gotta drain more water out. Thankfully though, I think because we put in, we got rid of that deep hole. We put all those layer of geotextile in there. I have not walked inside of there, but I know it's gonna be a lot more solid than it has been because of all those different layers of geotextiles inside of there. So it's stiffening everything up. So we're draining that out. It also kind of point out here compared to traditional pond construction. All of these ledges, instead of going vertical like we do on most of our projects, it's actually planted back a little bit. Reason being is this polypropylene liner is a lot more rigid. So it does not conform to those excavations very easily. It's better than working with concrete still, but it's not like EPDM. So we definitely have to think of all those little things now because yeah, the shape on this project is really, really important. We're trying to get that curvilinear type stuff. Yeah. So get rid of just that big blob. 
So lots of peninsulas and things, and we're trying to create that interest because remember we have the putting greens, the chipping greens, all that type of stuff. So we're trying to create these little cool vantage areas. So as Shaq and his guests that are here, they actually can wander around and have different views and different experiences all throughout the entire feature. So you can see behind me, it looks much, much, much better. Just getting that fabric in there, again, spreading the weight out, which is an important part of that material. Also allowing the bottom of the pond to breathe. Sean's over on this section. He is wrapping up our wetland filter. So we have 124. 128, 128 small aqua small blocks. We've yep. got eight centipedes, yep. two snorkels, and this is going to be the oversized biological filter for the pond. Exactly. Shaq loves the koi pond that we built for him three years ago. When we were out here mucking around three years ago, chaos, but looks phenomenal right now. So just incredible. Everything is looking really, really good. So the pond that they had here didn't hold water, and it was just mud. It was a clay bottom pond, so he wanted that. So he wanted those results, and he thought they were going to be able to do that just by digging the hole, having that natural groundwater. It's not the case. So that's why we're coming in, reshaping everything, trying to put that infrastructure in place, which is critical. So if we want good water quality, it starts with the intake bay, having the right flow rates, having the right pumps, having the right pre-filtration to pull leaf debris out of the pond, which is going to make a difference. So we're over here at yeah. Shaq's original pond that we built yep. a few years back, and this yep. is that intake bay. I guess, let's just call it a normal human size, right? <laughs> Not a Shaq size <laughs> exactly. uh, intake bay, but it's, a... it's doing exactly what you said. Yeah. So look at all the leaf debris sitting. I mean, it's springtime. We don't have a lot right now. Look on the surface of the pond. There's nothing. Yep. So all that stuff comes in. What we did, we sized the opening according to the amount of pumps that we have. We oversized it, and then we strategically dropped in that boulder in between. So what that did was it increased the velocity. If that rock is not there and the opening is larger, the water's still deep, yep. the amount of water coming in is actually much slower. So it's not going to get the draw that we're looking for. If we stay here long enough, you will actually notice the fish coming in this area for feeding, which is exactly what we want them to do because when fish are coming in and they're, these koi fish are bottom, they're benthic dwellers, they're benthic feeders traditionally. They have those little barbels on the side of their mouth. Their mouths are ventrally located, means it's on the bottom, it's facing down. So it's a bottom feeding animal. So they're going to come in here because of the flow. So they're also a riverine fish typically. So they're going to follow that flow in here. And this is where all the uneaten food is going to end up. This is where there's going to be microorganisms. This is where there's going to be stuff inside of here. So those fish will come in here and kind of clean this area for us, which is actually really, really cool. And what's cool too is the water coming into the intake bay, there's that like a little ridge and you can see a little bit of the fabric. I think the koi have kind of moved some of that gravel yeah, and stuff around, but it goes from about four, maybe five inches of water. And then in here, what's nice about it is we have almost a foot, maybe 10 inches to 11 inches yeah. of water. So it kind of goes up and then comes back. It goes from thicker water in through here, which makes it very easy for you to get a string, a skimmer net in or exactly. stuff to scoop the debris as it's swirling in this intake bay, which just makes it very, very nice for maintenance. Getting back to shaping and, yep. and kind of where we started this yep. to round everything out. Like Sean's just moved the machine out of here, which is awesome just to see all the big stuff happening but yeah. we've got this ridge here yes. right and this is what's going to hold back all of the aqua blocks the gravel all yep. that substrate that's in the wetland filter it's all part of the insulation process right but that's what this ridge is for right rather than just yeah. having all go in and can you explain that okay. exactly we're making like a pocket so the wetland filter is going to be trapped inside of this pocket this is the ridge on one side and then this side's actually higher which is that back edge yep. so our water level is right in between both of those things so we want to hold all that river rock and all those aqua blocks in place. So what it's going to do when we're pumping water into the bottom, it's forcing all the water up and then back into the pond system. What you're doing is you're creating a box for that upload to actually happen. Otherwise, yep. everything else would travel. Take the path of least resistance. Yep. And the water's not going to flow through the gravel media. It's going to bypass. So the key is we're forcing that water to go where we want it to go. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, no, it, it is. It's really, really cool. And it, like you said, it's great to see this. Sean's going to have that bottom cleaned up. We're going to recess those centipedes down for easy clean outs and maintenance. I mean, then I'm hoping that everything falls in place and that we should have a liner in here in the next few hours. All right, guys, super excited. It is Mon Is it Monday? I think it's Monday. Yes, it's Monday. Monday is our first project of the year, first full project of the year. We've been doing fix hits and tidying up loose ends from last year. We're out here in Wheaton, Illinois, doing a rehab. Now, I remember this project. This project's probably 20 plus years old. I don't think even the homeowners that are here were the original homeowners to the pond. They inherited the pond. We've put some facelift things on it. Almost so embarrassing that I don't want to show you, but I'm gonna because it's 
stuff that we did 20 plus years ago. And I will tell you this, there's one thing I know, we only hope to get better over time. So here's the original pond, right? We've got kind of a long thing. We tucked this thing into a small area. This old crab apple of sorts is on its last leg, so it's gotta go. I guarantee that thing grew a quite a bit since when we put it in because we would never ever try to build a pond that close to a tree. So it'll be interesting to see what the roots have done as we pull out this liner out of here. The new design is to make this simpler and better. So everything from here over, absolute waste. It's not even fun for the fish to go back in there and a maintenance nightmare to get to that skimmer. You can also see how much higher the liner is than the grade over there. So we've got to fix that, change a bunch of stuff there. We're going to just fill in dirt over in this side. We're going to end up bringing that skimmer box from there all the way over to here, making it easier to get to. I don't want to bring the pond any further this way because this whole patio is for outdoor dining. I am going to bring the pond out into this part of the patio because it's wasted space. The patio looks good being big, but nobody's using it for anything. We're going to move the waterfall from here over to here, pull out one of the burning bushes, leaving room for maybe some taller evergreens to just kind of help with some privacy and give them a bigger backdrop than what they currently have. One of the things you guys know that we talk about is keeping the berm to scale with everything else. So the waterfall is not going to get that much taller, but what I do want to do is leave plenty of room for soil so plants can help give them just a little bit of privacy. Right now you can't help but focus on the neighbor's house and it's not that it's an ugly house by any means, it's just that's not what you want to look at. We want to create a nicer backdrop so you're focused more on the waterfall sitting there. The waterfall almost dropping directly into the pond over in this area area pond coming out into here and then kind of circling back like so I think we'll get that skimmer box even maybe there I really like that bigger pond here skimmer box there lots of work to do all right so next step we got to take this tree down trees coming down rocks will come out Whew. <laughs> and it's only eight o'clock in the morning here we go it's right, so a little different than you guys see because it was dealing with the groundwater and making it so mushy in here we laid underlayment down and then we've got a layer of bedding sand to help us kind of leveling everything off you can see that the troughs have been cut for the centipedes. Snorkels are going to go down at that end. So we'll have one snorkel there, one snorkel there, and then four connected centipedes running in each trough. And we have a 128 small aqua blocks to go over the top. Before we do all that, we're going to get the kind of this base layer down. Then we will drop the liner in, then fabric. Then we'll drop our snorkel centipedes and rock along the edge just to hold everything into place. And then it's crunch time and we'll get those aqua blocks in there and then start locking everything together and getting those aqua blocks under compression. And just like that, two hours and all the rock is out. The tree is gone and we're ready to start laying out this new pond. And so you can kind of see where I've marked with some paint in here. That's where the pond's gonna come in. We're gonna use this wall stone right in here, right off the edge of this. You won't see that. And then we're gonna bring the cop door and this paper stone back over the top of it. So we're kind of like a soldier course there. So we'll have to blend in the soldier course from back in here, back over the top of all of that. It'll stop there. There'll be a boulder that kind of ends it there and then in here more of a boulder retaining wall. Now this biofalls is going to get dug way down because right now it's way too tall. You can see how ridiculous that would look. The soil would have to come all the way up to there and then it would look like a big volcano with water coming over the top. So we're going to bring that thing down quite a bit, get that set, get the plumbing in, start pulling up these pavers. They want to keep the one hydrangea, which I'm okay with. We just got to get some boulders back behind it to keep soil off of it so we don't bury that thing. And we've got plenty of rock to work with. We got rock over there. We got rock over there. I think the next step is really just start pulling apart the patio and really defining the shape of this thing. Uh, we're also going to fill all of this in over in here with some extra soil. It'll just kind of slope that way. We're going to get that red bud in here. And then I put in a little bit of a peninsula kind of like right in here. One for some shape, but two and more importantly, I think it's going to be for some more plants. Like I really just want to see like some height in here where we don't see that whole house and we can focus, like I said before, on that bio. Oh, okay. The Pond Guy on YouTube. Oh, they're all alive. Three. One, two, three. <laughs> they shipped yesterday at five and they're here today at noon. Yeah. Nice. Wow. And now you ladies will be on the vlog. Oh. <laughs>
Look at that. Three beautiful koi from my buddy Sean Rosen on Long Island. So these fish came from Japan to Long Island to Chicago Midway connection, and then they landed in Salt Lake City. And now these fish going in my Heber City, Utah pond. Really, you got some new buddies. Super excited. Let the water temperature adjust. One thing I want to point out, look at how much air. This bag is about a third air, about two thirds air, one third water with three fish in it. They left yesterday at five, today it's 1.30. So they've been gone for about 18 hours or so. Next stop, let them go. So they have been floating for about 45 minutes. So the temperature is the same. Normally I would take them and put them into a bowl before putting them into the pond because there's a lot of ammonia in this water. But this pond is so big, the ammonia is just going to get dissipated. But let's check it out. We got three beautiful koi, and I'll show you as they come out what they are. You excited to see the new guys? All right, see who comes out first. Okay, that's the platinum, a Jinrin platinum ogon, the white one. That's a Doitsu. God. That orange one is a Doitsu Benegoy. And let's see. And then they got a Yamabuki, which is the yellow one. So beautiful fish, all about 12 inches long. And now I have five total fish and a lot of little babies, but that's what babies koi usually look like. So there's about 10 nice ones and about 40 ones that aren't that great. But look at how beautiful that Jinrin Ogon shows up there. And you can see some of the babies. Some of them are looking pretty nice. And then of course, Willow <laughs> trying to say hello to her new friends. All right, so bringing in the koi. Check out this pond as it grows for the rest of of the year. There is my Faye McDonald Tropical Hybrid Cross Mix. This should fill this entire area by the end of the summer. And I'm gonna put the link to this vlog. Nope, I'm gonna actually show this vlog, the construction of it in a few weeks on Greg Looks Like the Pond. I love my job. And so just like that, the pond is leveled, destroyed, new liners put back in, skimmer box relocated from there. It was all the way back by that tree before to this area. Big 6,000 biofalls in here. Used to have a 2,500 closer to the deck. We got all that soil up off the fence. We're gonna clean that up a little bit more. Should have this whole pond rocked in hopefully by noon and then we can kind of concentrate on all the cleanup and we're even gonna put some plants in here. So this is gonna be fun. All right, final stretch here. You can see the pond is filling up with water. We've even started putting some plants in. You can just see what a difference a single plant makes. That hemlock is gonna be a perfect addition. Now a hemlock will get pretty big, but the nice thing about hemlocks is you can trim them and keep them at whatever size you want. So as long as they just keep kind of manicuring the sides, it won't hang out too far into the pond. We're gonna actually add another one back over here. So this is a technique we use all the time. It's so nice right off the viewing area. It allows us to bring an existing patio, a future patio right up to the edge of the pond and then more importantly, drop it straight down. The amount of time it would have taken to stack boulders like this up and get them perfectly level and then bring those bricks up to it would have been a nightmare. So the wall allows us to get it exactly at the level we need. We end up bringing a soldier course of stone, which is the border right along that edge. It looks so good from over there. A couple more plants, still have a waterfall to build, and we've got about two, three hours left. And you can see I'm, I'm sweating. <laughs> All right, it's gonna be a long one, I think. Uh, that's all right. We're still having fun, and it's gonna look so cool when we're finished. that I stole his camera. Just kidding. I am out here and I'm getting started on pulling out this spillway basin bowl and replacing it with our fire feature bowl. Nothing is wrong with it. He just wanted to upgrade the spillway bowl because he really likes the look of the spout compared to the 360 bowl that we have out here. So let me spin you guys around and show you what I mean by everything. So with this feature, we did this pondless waterfall last year and we installed the basin bowl, which is sitting right there. That's the one they're gonna be replacing today. And then we installed these two spillway bowls here. So these two have the spouts on them and that gives a little bit more of a look and a sound to the homeowner when he spends his time sitting on this awesome patio here and then the pool sitting right behind me and he wanted another spillway bowl sitting right here so we're gonna pull this thing out and we're gonna replace it with the fire bowl that he saw at the retail store so let's get to it To 
wrap. I will agree that taking out the other bowl and putting it in the fire bowl is a much, much better idea. Next thing they need to do here is some landscaping. So I just spent a good couple hours with them going over some landscape plans. I think we'll come back out here and vlog this on Greg's channel because it is a really, really cool stream go. That was exciting. I can't believe how much stuff Chris and Ed got done this week. I hope they're feeling comfortable about the prep work they got done because next time they're out there, they're gonna be out there with a whole lot of certified Aquascape contractors finishing that project up. I'm sure that was messy for them, but it's nothing they haven't done before. But you guys stay tuned because it'll be fun. Also, hope you enjoyed that Spillway Bowl project. It was so much fun putting that in. I know Chris and his wife just absolutely love it. I'll agree that adding that fire bowl back to the edge of that pond was so much nicer than the big spillway bowl that they had before and i know they're going to enjoy it that much more at night hey guys thanks so much for joining make sure you check in next week where we have more projects more fix-its more maintenance more excitement for you all you guys know what to do like comment subscribe and maybe i'll do it again bye